In this problem we're told that on the planet Mars the gravitational acceleration is 3.7 meters per second squared. Suppose a rock is thrown upward at a speed of 20 meters per second. So that's our initial velocity. At an angle of 70 degrees above the horizontal. So that's the angle. Find the time of the rock's flight and the maximum height that it reaches. So this rock goes up at that speed and direction and it travels in this parabolic path and then comes back to the surface of the planet. And we want to know the time and the height. Now the key to a projectile problem is to do the horizontal and vertical motion independently. To do that we have to break this vector up into its horizontal and vertical components. So I'll draw these here to the right is v0 x and then up here is v0 y the horizontal and vertical components of the initial velocity and we can find those v0 x is going to be v0 times the cosine of the angle so that's going to be 20 meters per second times the cosine of 70 degrees and v0 y will be v0 times the sine of the angle. So that will be 20 meters per second times the sine of 70 degrees. And you punch those into the calculator and make sure your calculator is set in degree mode and you get for the horizontal 6.84 meters per second and the vertical is 18.79 meters per second. Now let's deal with just the vertical motion here because it's the vertical motion that is going to determine how high it goes and how much time it spends in the air. So I know the initial velocity, what I'll use for my initial velocity is this vertical component of the initial velocity. Now note this, when I say that the vertical velocity right there is a positive number and I know that it's going that way, upward, then I have decided that up is the positive direction. And writing that as a positive number implies that. That means that the acceleration has to be negative. So I'm going to take note of that. The acceleration is negative. And be careful here. It's not negative 9.8 because we're on the planet Mars and you're given this different value for the acceleration. The acceleration is negative 3.7 meters per second squared. Now, if I think about the motion from the start to the peak, so I'm going to consider the motion just from the start to the peak. That tells me something else. I know that right at the peak, it's moving to the right. I'll draw that vector in, um, in orange too to be consistent. Its velocity at the peak, right at the peak it is quit going up and is about to start coming down. So right at the peak the vertical velocity is zero. So if I'm considering motion only from start to peak I can say my final velocity is zero. So now that gives me some information. I know the initial and final velocity vertically and I also know the acceleration vertically. So I can use this equation v is equal to v0 plus at. And I'm going to put in the velocity at the beginning and the velocity at the peak and solve for t. And if this is the velocity at the beginning and that's the velocity at the peak, then this will be the time from the beginning to the peak. So do the algebra here and t ends up being v minus v0 over a. So let's put in these numbers v is zero. And the initial velocity is 18.79 meters per second and divide that by a which is negative 3.7 meters per second squared. And these seconds, th these meters cancel out and this second here cancels one of those two and we're left with a second and this second down here in the denominator of this denominator is algebraically the same as being in the numerator 
and then these two negative signs also cancel out and we end up getting a positive number and the units are seconds and it comes out to a 10 uh, 5.08 seconds when you do the math now remember we put in the the velocity at the start and the velocity at the peak so the time that we just got right here is the time from the start to the peak so the total time will be twice this and you can do that in your head the total time is 10.16 seconds and then we're also told to find the height that it reaches the maximum height and we do that with this equation y is equal to y0 plus v0 t plus one half a t squared now if we want to find the height at the peak then we need to put in the time here at the peak and the time at the peak was this number the 5.08 so let's do that let's put in y0 is 0 that's the initial height right there at the ground the initial velocity v0 is the vertical component of the initial velocity so that's 18.79 meters per second times the time which was our 5.08 seconds plus one half times a and a is negative 3.7 meters per second squared times t squared and so we have 5.08 seconds squared and this seconds right here which is squared cancels out the second squared here so this term simply has a unit of meters and over here the seconds cancel out and we have meters so we'll have a certain number of meters plus a certain number of meters so our answer will be in meters and this comes out to 95.45 meters for the first term plus a negative that negative sign shows up so I'm gonna write minus 47.74 meters and we end up with uh, 47.71 meters and if you do the calculation with complete accuracy um, this number actually ends up being exactly half of that in size. Um, these extra decimal points don't really matter down here. We don't really know our acceleration beyond two decimal places. So if we were rounding this, we could round it, um, since we know this number, this given value, to, to two digits. And assuming we knew the, um, the initial velocity and the angle to two digits, then we would want to round that to two digits. So 48 meters is... Um, is really a fine answer there. Exactly how you should round these numbers though and deal with the significant figures, that's, that's a good topic but that's not the point of this problem. The point here is that you have to understand that you need to separate the horizontal and vertical and work those independently and in this problem you only have to deal with the vertical motion. It's the vertical motion that determines the time of the flight and the maximum height that it reaches.